good morning. Good morning. How is everyone on this beautiful, sunshining, 75 degree day? Yeah. So, I don't know where you're floating around, Pastor, but it's not Crown Point, right? <laughs> but praise the Lord. But uh, Maureen Frolic, she put it all in the. Uh, uh, put it all in perspective for me earlier. She says, Pastor, it's, at least it's not snowing. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, believe it or not, I had pictures pop up on my phone from years gone by. And on these last few days, we've had snow in days like this. So you, you just never know. But we want to welcome you today. Bonnie's our worship leader today. And uh, before we start, Bonnie... I want to take care of one item of business that uh, I think is a big deal. And uh, for those of you that aren't Facebook uh, readers, you you didn't see the initial posting, but we want to welcome someone into our church that uh, we've considered her a member for a long time, but uh, she called me a couple weeks ago and officially uh, we talked and she gave me her her testimony, which I kind of knew already. But uh, she says, Pastor, I'd like to be a member of St. John's. Can I join your church? Of course, my reply was, well, it's not my church. <laughs> I just happen to be a member, too. And, uh, but with that said, uh, we'd like to welcome, officially today, we've got the official membership certificate. And I've already told her, I've signed the certificate, so it's legal. It's legal. And we want to welcome today, let's give a warm St. John's welcome to Patricia Gregory as we welcome her into membership today. And if you've never met Patricia before, you're in for a real treat. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Welcome. Thank you. Get around, shake her hands during the, uh, the handshake time. But welcome, Patricia, today. Bonnie. Go right ahead. Good morning, everyone. And a really, really big welcome to everyone. Do we have any first time people here? Any first time? Well, it's good to see you all. Amen. Our next church workday is Saturday, May the 6th at 8.30 in the morning. All help is welcome. And the next Breakfast and Blessings is slated for May the 13th from 8.30 to 10.00. See Carol if you are interested in helping with this great ministry. Next Sunday, Zion UCC will officially install Tom Norwalk as their pastor. The service begins there at 3 in the afternoon with a dinner to follow. Please let Pastor Wendell know if you are planning to attend. Zion is looking for a head count for the meal preparation. Today's beautiful flowers are given by Jim in memory of Joanne. Uh, this week's calling club names are Jenny Arndt, Robin Becker, and Gail Fronick. If you would like to be added to the list, please let Char know. If you need a phone number, please call the church office. And our church invite door hangers are available on the Narthex counter. Please grab 10 and distribute in your immediate neighborhood. Don't grab 11, just 10. That's, you can take 20 if you want. Uh, <laughs> But we just kind of, I, I don't really know if I counted out 10, Bonnie, but uh, they're, they're on the counter. And we have more in the back if, uh, when, when they're needed. But uh, these, these are very non-invasive. I mean, like I said, you don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to explain anything. Uh, you just do this and, and hang it on the door and go on to the next one. We're just asking everybody, you know, five houses to the left, and five houses to the right or across the street where you live. And... Uh, just trying to get the word out about our church and our love for the Lord and how we're trying to make a difference in this community and beyond. So those are on the narthex counter, as Bonnie said. Our National Day of Prayer event is slated for Thursday, May the 4th, in the town square at noon. Plan now to be with us. Our church will be open after the event, beginning at 1.30, for additional prayer opportunity. We've got these, boys. I feel like Vanna White, you know, <laughs> holding up, you know, or something like that. But we've got uh, these posters around the, the back bulletin board and on each entrance uh, window. Uh, but as Bonnie said, that event will be Thursday, 
uh, May 4th at noon, and it will be on the square outside, weather permitting. And uh, the, the group that's responsible for this, they were gracious enough to invite me to be on the committee planning it for this year. So whether I'll be praying or not, uh, as far as the group, I'm not sure of, of that uh, yet. I'm an alternate, so as, as I prayed last year. But if weather is bad, we'll be going inside to the courthouse, uh, the old courthouse on, on the square, and conducting service there. But we'd like for you to be a part of it. If you're able to navigate the square and find a place to park and walk over there, we'd love to have you. If not, uh, just plan on, uh, you can plan on being here at the church for just a simple time of prayer. After 1.15 or 1.30, the doors will be open here and uh, We'll be continuing on with the momentum of praying on this square. So it's going to be a good day. Be thinking about your part in all of that. Thank you, Bonnie. Plans are underway for a Mother's Day luncheon after service on May the 7th. Ladies Guild will provide chicken and potato salad, a sign-up sheet on back bulletin board for the head count, and desserts and sides if you wish to bring. Um, I just wanted to make something clear. Everyone is invited. It's not just for the ladies and the moms. Everybody, families, everybody. Bring your dogs if you yes. want. <laughs> Any, anyway, and next Sunday, April the 30th, will be Bob and Irene's last um, Sunday with us prior to moving down state closer to family. There will be a time of fellowship with them next week after the service downstairs. But let's honor them today with a standing ovation. God bless you guys. Everyone, if, you can, if you're able to stand, let's stand and give Bob and Irene. <laughs> this is not to embarrass them, but we just want them to know how much we love them and how much they mean to us as a church family. God bless you both. Special, special fellowship next week because they're going to be here, but we wanted to make sure and honor them today. Are there any other announcements? One more related to Bob and Irene. As they're moving here, they've asked that uh, they've got a fold-out couch that is, that is available. It'll be available after this Tuesday. If you need one or know someone that needs that, get with them and they'll, uh, they'll, look, and still, they'll move forward with that. Amen. Amen. I tell you, we are, we're cooking with gas today, aren't we, buddy? Amen. Uh, all right. So if you know, just get with... Everybody knows who Bob and Irene are now, right? Okay. Just get with them. If you know someone or someone has that need, uh, I know if they have it, it's, it's good stuff. And you can count on that. And it would be a, a blessing to have that in your home or whoever's home it goes to. Thank you. Please, please join me in the call to worship. In this season of waiting on God, we are seeking light. We are seeking the light of God's love. In our families, we are seeking light. In our world, we are seeking light. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and it will be given to you. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Come into our world today. Our first hymn is I Heard an Old, Old Story. 277. Victory in Jesus, right? I Heard an Old, Old Story. All right, let's do one and three, Laura. One and three.
I got some goosebumps on the back of my neck after that one. Thank you, thank you. Please join me in the invocation. Let us now pray to the Father of light. Lord, let your light shine in us. Lord God, we pray that your light may shine on all the earth. Help us to reflect the light of your love. Amen. Amen. Let's say good morning to each other with the passing of the peace. Amen. Shake a hand or two. Welcome somebody that you may or may not know. be to the Father. For a second, you can be seated too. All right. How are we doing today, everybody? I've got a question today. Who likes to be in the dark? It figures. <laughs> What's so exciting about the dark? You don't know where you're at? And, 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 and your sisters can't throw stuff at you? Because they can't see you, right? Okay, that'll work. Now that one I could relate to, maybe. All right. But most of us don't really like the dark. Would you, would you guys believe? Now, I know this is probably going to catch you by surprise, and you're just going to be so shocked and amazed. But did you, did you know that Pastor Wendell, when I was a little boy... I was afraid of the dark. (laughs) 
Work with me here. <laughs> Some people are. But I, I mean, I wasn't. Okay, maybe a little bit. But it was, I didn't like being in the dark. I didn't like haunted houses or stuff like that. I just didn't like it. Didn't like it. But you know what? I like light. I like it when Miss... Miss Kathy was lighting the candles today. I was thinking about who, who, who do we know is light? Who lights our world? What's the one name of the person who lights our world? Starts with a J. It's not a trick question. You know it? Jesus? Yes! And her name starts with a J too, right? Jocelyn. So, Amen. So we're glad that we know the light of the world is Jesus today. Thank you, guys. You're going to help me out today with Helping Hands, our collection for Helping Hands today. All right, here you go. Here you go. Here's one for Sadie. Here's my buddy, how are you? All right. Good to have Tess back with us. And Ryan, Tess wasn't feeling well last week, so we just praise God for answered prayer there. And uh, thankful that she's back with us today. Amen. All right. Thank you. The scripture reading for this morning is Psalm 27, 1 through 8. This is an exuberant declaration of faith, Amen. a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 I thank you so much today. We've, since Easter Sunday, we've uh, started this message series called Light the Way, Light the Way series, and uh, it deals with the light of God's love in our lives in a couple different aspects, as today's message is there's no fear in the light. There's no fear. Now, now Wesley's already been helping me out a little bit with the sermon today, so we're, ju we're just going to bring him right, right into it here. Uh, has, uh, has Wesley ever cried out during the night? <laughs> Every night, huh? And, and, and why is that? Is, uh, does, does he sleep in the dark? Is there a nightlight? Or... He's, he just wants to know. Yeah, now, see, this is what cooperation is all about. <laughs> 
He wants to know that you're there, right? He wants to know that you're there. I mean, the darkness is not our friend. He wants to know that mom is there or dad is there or both are there and he wants to be with you. And, and so, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Probably a little frustrating sometimes, because uh, mom and dad like like their their rest and, and their quiet time too. But when a baby cries out at night, they want to know that someone is there. They want the assurance of mom and dad's presence when they're afraid. You know, and uh, we go and we we assure them that we're there. I can remember when my my oldest son who's now 42 years old, <laughs> was, was about his age. And we had him uh, in, in the one bedroom where we put up the Snoopy wallpaper, you know? And I remember going into his room one night when he was crying and upset and kind of sniveling and, and going on. Uh, and, uh, and if he ever watches this, he'll kill me probably. Uh, but uh, I says, what's wrong, buddy? And you know, <laughs> Snoopy's looking at me, Dad. <laughs> I said, he's what? He goes, yeah, he's looking at me. I mean, he thought Snoopy was mad at him, you know? And, and that upset him, you know? So I assured him that his relationship with Snoopy was okay and that they were going to be friends in the morning when the lights came back on. And he, uh, he happily went back to sleep. But, you know, in all seriousness, when we, we deal with aspects... Of, of light and, and darkness. God spoke these words in Isaiah 41, verse 10, to the Israelites, and he repeated them. He says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Whatever time we're afraid, in the dark or otherwise, it's important for us to know that God is there. God is there. there there's times for me as your pastor, when I've been with, with several of you in times of crisis in your lives, or in times past with other places, times of crisis, or I've seen my father as a pastor uh, do the same thing, or just been with families where there's a crisis going on, there, there's inevitably sometimes there's, there's something that we, we can't do. We can't make a difference, but we can be there. And that's the most important thing sometimes in our lives is knowing that someone is there and that someone cares about what we're going through. No matter what it is, how horrible it is, how awful it is, someone cares. And God is always there and he cares. And the promise that he gave there in Isaiah, that he will be with us. It's a sure promise. As he told the Israelites again in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, he says, Haven't I commanded you to be strong and courageous? Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, I don't know about you sometimes. I mean, I use my slogan, I think I even said it this morning, that I have a good memory, it's just short. And seriously, when I say it, a good memory, because sometimes I forget how much God loves me. I truly do. I forget how much that he loves me and how much that he's with me all the time. And if you're like me, there are times when you wonder... Is he really there watching over me? Now, I've got verses such as this that we just read, you know, from Joshua that, that tell us that this is God's word speaking to me, God's word speaking to you, that he is there. He tells me not to be afraid or discouraged. I've preached a whole series of messages in the past on discouragement. Once Satan knows that you're a child of God, that he can't have you, what he, will endeavor to, what he will endeavor to do in your life is discourage you. He's like, remember the old Batman show where Batman had the utility belt? 
And everything in the world could come out of that utility belt. And Batman had an answer for everything. Satan has that same belt and, and he uses it. He'll pull out that tool of discouragement and he'll try to discourage you in everything. He'll tell you you're not, you're not good enough or you're not this or you're not that. He'll concoct something. He'll work both sides of the street on you. Whatever he can do, he will try to discourage you to take your eyes off of God. He can't have your soul because you're a saved, born-again child of God. He knows that, but he'll try to discourage you. He'll try to make your testimony of no value so that when other people see you, they see discouragement. They don't see the light of God's love shining out. And I'm not saying that we're going to be all peachy keen and have a smile on our face all the time because that's just not the way life is. But we can know who holds today and we can know who holds tomorrow. And we can know that we're in his hands as he's holding both of those. We have that assurance. We have that promise. There is no fear in that because God's promise is sure. God assured his people back then in the Old Testament that I am with you. He doesn't promise us victory over terms or safety according to the ideas of comfort that we might have or a timeline that always makes sense. In our hearts. But the Lord is faithful to tell his children that he is ever present and he's near in carrying them through whatever wilderness they're going through. When we're tempted to think, as I said, such assurance that life will be easy. It's one thing I've always shared with folks once they trust. <laughs> the young man saying one time, he goes, oh, I've trusted the Lord as my Savior. Life is just going to be a piece of cake now. I'm like, dude, you just declared for the Lord and the enemy, the prince of this world doesn't like that. So you can expect a battle. You can expect you're, you're in a war for an hour. You're, you've declared for an army and a soldier has to fight. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a piece of cake. But God's love is always there. Not according to mine. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 See, you just got to go with it. No, he's a special dude. Love that guy. But you know, from, from that aspect, have you ever noticed that faith and fear are connected. Some of the, the biggest times in my life when I've been the most afraid because I know I can't do anything about the circumstance. I can't do anything about the situation. But I know God can. And God's involved. And so the biggest times when I've been the most afraid is when God's presence and my faith in him has to go from here up to here in in trusting him because it's all about him anyway. It's not about Wendell. It's not about what what I do or what I know or what what I might be able to accomplish. It's all about what God has already done. I heard my father put it this way many years ago, that nothing catches God by surprise. I mean, think about that. When he says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, that encompasses all things in between. So whatever is going on in your life, whatever your experience, whether it's emotional, physical, financial, or a combination of all of the above, God knows where you're at. He knows. And I'm not saying it's an easy thing that you're going through or that you might go through one day. But I'm saying that God will be there. And as he tries us, he gives us an opportunity for our faith to abound in these times of greatest fear. It's God's delight, I think, to show his power over my anxiety sometimes, to display his sovereignty over my disbelief and to bolster me in the face of my paralyzing fear he lets me know he's still God the reality is that our worst fears and our seemingly impossible circumstances today are nothing compared to the separation that Jesus 
withstood. We celebrated Easter just a few weeks ago. I say, when I think about Jesus on the cross, suspended there between heaven and hell, looking at the Father, when the Father put the sins of humanity on Jesus, and the Father turned his back. The Father turned his back on the Son there on the cross because God will not look upon sin. But he put the sins of all of us on him. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me, Lord? But he knew what had to be done. He knew the sacrifice that he was making and he knew. He knew as he did that. It was the only way to bring mankind back. He was and is our Emmanuel. That word, as we talk at Christmas time, Emmanuel, we talk about the names of Jesus at his birth. It means God with us. God overcame our fearful separation from our Creator, and He bridged an impossible gap. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our ultimate hope is in him, every aspect of who he is. Emmanuel, God with us, that delivers, just that name delivers a hope when we have none. And he provides life when we haven't been living at all. It's not something we should celebrate just at Christmas as we're celebrating his birth. A lot of people think, you know, uh, at Christmas time, you know, it's, it's this, that, or the other about Jesus, you know, and they're celebrating him like he's some kind of self-help guru or something like that. A symbol of world peace, a poet of, of wise words, or a symbol of hope. But rather, at Christmas time, and, and even, even now, we attempt to acknowledge all things about Jesus with our gratitude and our praise for the one who is help, is peace, and who is our hope in all things. Fear is defeated with faith, and that faith is anchored in God's character today. God's character is his glory, and it's on display through our lives and the light that he shines in us today. So what is our hope for today? Jesus walked the dusty roads a long time ago. He ate among the lowly. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. It's no coincidence that the very assurance that he gave to the Israelites in the verses that I read as we've started this message out to you. He says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. You'll find that loosely rendered in John chapter 14. We preach and teach that these three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are one. I don't know about you, but I mean, I have a hard time understanding that with my finite mind. I can't understand how three can be one. But how do I accept it? By faith. Because God says that's who he is. These three are one. And he has given us the Holy Spirit. I know I have the Holy Spirit in my heart. I know that when I trusted Jesus Christ as an eight-year-old boy, 57 years ago. I know you're doing the math. I admit to it. He's lived within my heart. I invited him in. I asked him in. I received the gift that he was offering me, and that's a salvation in Jesus Christ. I received it. God with us. Emmanuel came to live within me that day because his spirit indwells within me. Matthew 20 says, Remember, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28, 20. The Spirit sent by the Father, one with Christ, is with us continually. He is our eternal Emmanuel. May we be quick to praise him and proclaim his faithfulness. Fear has no match in the face of his greatness. Fear not. He is with us, friend. Our fears will forever and always find their remedy in his presence. And foremost, we need not fear 
when he is near. Remember that night over 2,000 years ago? Mary there in a, in a stable in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Use a little Wesley as the example there earlier, but you can imagine Mary shushing Jesus as he probably cried that night. I don't think he was afraid of the dark, but he was just doing what babies do. He needed to be held, needed to be reassured, needed to be loved, needed mom and dad around. And he had his earthly mom there. And she shushed and rocked him. Born to a very ordinary couple in the most unlikely of places and circumstances. Mary and Joseph didn't fully know what God was going to do with their son yet. But they knew how to trust God. He had sent his son to bear presence, to love, and to serve through flesh and bone. They were full of faith, not because the, not because the road ahead was easy, not because they were capable, and not because they were fearless. They trusted God and had faith in his words and his promises. This morning, as we look to God as light, and we know that we have no fear in him, he is our Emmanuel. He conquers, he comforts, he answers our fear with the presence of our Savior. He meets us right where we are in this time of year and all times of year, assuring us, Shh, shh, I'm right here. I'm right here, he says. I'm the light of the word, world. I'm right here. I'm with you. Do you know him as Savior today? Those of you watching online, do you know him as Savior today? Last week, someone waved their hand. They put in remarks, I'm waving my hand. If you'd like to know more about Jesus, or if you've got a need in your life, just say, Pastor, I'm waving my hand. And I'll reach out to you privately online. I'll reach out to you and we'll we'll discuss whatever it is that you're waving your hand about. But if you're here today or you're watching online and you've never met this Jesus, seek me out. I'll take God's word. I'll show you. I won't show you what I think, but I'll show you what God's word says. How you can know that this Jesus came to be your savior. And the Emmanuel that he gives us to live within us is that spirit of truth and love. And there's no fear when he's with us. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. We don't want to be burdened as we segue into the next song. Right, Laura? Shackled by a heavy burden. 281, he touched me. If you want to stretch your legs, you're welcome to, or just remain seated. Let's do, uh, let's do the first and the last, Laura. She smiled. I saw it. He touched me.
Thank you so much. Please be seated just for a moment. We're going to take some prayer requests. We've got, uh, we've got a couple here. It's good to have Norma Jean back with us today. She's in answered prayer. And uh, she's still feeling a little bit weak, she says, so we're just, just praying for her. And uh, I see Susie over there, too. Susie, we've got some prayer shawls in, uh, in the office or next to the office on a, on a cart there for you, okay? So make sure we find those before uh, you take, take off today. Uh, and Yvonne then asks that we pray for her Aunt Norma. Niemeyer again, she's, uh, I'm trying, mid-90s, right? She, 94. She's back in the hospital again. She'd been in a few months ago, and we've been praying for her, and she got out and was doing better. But uh, some things have come up again, so let's pray for Norman Niemeyer once again. And uh, good to see Jill here today. She had rolled, uh, rolled an ankle and still being careful, though, right? Trying to stay on your feet. So let's, so which gets good to see you here today too. Amen. Amen. And we're thankful today for Pat, as we said earlier, for joining the church. We're thankful for her. And uh, good to have some other friends. The looters are back. Irene White's back. God bless you folks. Thank you for being here today. And, uh, and Kevin, you've got your brother here today, right? Amen. Amen. Good to have them with us today here. And uh, they're from downstate, and uh, we just, uh, Evansville, right? North of Louisville. North of Louisville, okay, north of Louisville. I think downstate, I don't know why Evansville always pops into my mind, but I guess it is kind of downstate. But welcome today, glad to have you guys with us today. All right, other prayer requests today. Today, amen. Anybody else? Yes, Bobby? David Brooks, um, kind of lost communication Okay, Bobby's brother David, she's kind of lost communication with him. She wants God to keep him safe. We can pray according to that, Bobby, for sure. Thank you. Who else? Yes, in the back here. Go ahead, uh, Vivian. The world. Amen. The world. Who would disagree with this assessment? The world has gone crazy. It's, yeah, I, I think it probably always has been. We're just seeing it now more because of social media and news access and, and all of this stuff. But we need to pray for the world. Thank you, Vivian. Okay. Who else? Who else? Susia? Uh, Ed May Jones? Eddie May. Okay. okay. Eddie May Jones' family, she lost another son, lost several sons. So just pray for uplift her and her family during this time. And uh, good to have Alice back, too. I see Alice here. She had been ill, and she's doing a lot better. So we're thankful for you being back, too, Alice. God bless you. Amen. Who else? Who else? Dave? Man, I had not heard that. I had not heard that. Thank you, Dave, for, uh, for bringing that to our attention. Yes, we need to pray according, according to America. Amen. Amen. All right, Terry, I think I saw your hand up. Yes, I have prayed. Today is my oldest daughter, Sarah's birthday. Amen. Amen. Sarah's birthday, your oldest daughter. Amen. 46. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy birthday, Sarah, if you're watching this some, somewhere. 
Amen. Who else? Anybody else? All right. Don't want. Don't want to forget anybody. Uh, as I said, good to have Glad Tess is, is doing better. We're grateful for that too. Amen. And if you you get our prayer list, or you see when you know Sharp puts the prayer list in the bulletin, things like that. If you have an update for us, let us uh, you know let us know, and we'd like to be able to share that because we like updates that are praiseworthy. Uh, or if we need to double down and pray harder on some things, we need to do that to be aware. Yes, ma'am. Irene, go ahead. You are precious, you know that? <laughs> Amen. She was sharing that with me before, beforehand, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you, you brought that up again, that we have been praying for you, and we're glad that these tests and things have gone well, and we pray that that continues. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else? If not unspoken by the show of hands, God sees your hearts and your hands. And uh, let's take a moment for silent prayer. We'll bring these needs to him once again before we uh, receive our offering. Amen. Lord God, thank you for your blessings today. We thank you for Patricia becoming a part of our family officially today. And uh, we pray for uh, Norma Niemeyer, Lord, as she's in the hospital. Pray that you touch her and lift her up, Lord. Strengthen her. And uh, as Bobby's asked prayer for her brother David, who they lost touch with, that, uh, Lord, uh, you would just shield him from whatever circumstance he finds himself in. And, God, draw him back uh, to you and to the family. We pray for our world, Lord, has been asked for. Uh, and, God, circumstances there, and we're grateful for the testimony about Texas, Lord, and uh, turning America turning her hearts back to you based upon uh, your, your commandments, Father. We need you in our lives. Father, and we pray as Susie's asked for uh, Eddie Mae, uh, her aunt, Lord, who's lost uh, several sons, Lord, just lost another one recently, Lord, and we just pray for this time of loss. And Lord, this this request reminds me too that uh, we expressed on Facebook, extending our condolences to uh, Sister Jane Pappenheim over the loss of her brother, Butch, this past week. Father, continue to be with their family as well. And celebra- celebrating a birthday, uh, Terry S. prays for her daughter, Sarah, as uh, she's celebrating number 46, and we're grateful for that and for the godly woman that Terry says that she is. You've seen the uplifted hands, Lord, and we ask, Lord, according to your will, that you meet these at the point of their need. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask our ushers to come. We're going to receive our morning offering. And we've got something just a little bit different for you today as the ushers are coming. But, you know, I passed out paper to some of you. If uh, you didn't get one would like one to participate, I'll, uh, I'll see that you get one here in a second. But instead of Laura playing, we've worked this out with her and, uh, beforehand. Uh, we're going to play a musical selection by a female artist, and she's going to be singing How Great Thou Art, and we've asked you to see if you can identify who this artist is singing over the PA. As the offering is collected, lessons, so write the name down, and we'll collect the names and see if you know if your guess is correct. All right? God bless you. Ushers, go ahead.
guests into me as you're leaving the auditorium today. All right. Thank you. Laura? Our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for the gifts and for the givers today. We pray, God, that you'd uh, help us to be faithful stewards of everything that's entrusted to us uh, financially here at St. John's. Guide our path, lift our hearts today as we walk in the light of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Let's see. That right there. Our concluding song today is... I think this one that uh, Char might have requested a time or two. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Page number 278. I should have known that. I did know that. I just couldn't think of it. Have you ever known something that you couldn't think of? It happens. They call it a senior moment, but uh, I, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Let's, uh, I see Ken Craft here. Ken, how many are we going to do? We're going to do all four. All four verses of Amazing Grace to conclude our service today. All right. Remember, 10 million years on that last verse. 
bless you. So good to have you in the Lord's house today. So good to have those that are watching online with us today. This is the fourth Sunday in April, so next Sunday is the fifth Sunday. So we're excited about that. Remember all the stuff going on. Uh, if you are thinking about going to Pastor Tom's um, installation in, uh, in Dyer at 3 o'clock next Sunday, let me know so we can make sure. Uh, we've already given them a number, so uh, <laughs> we're probably... We're covered either way, I think, but if you're thinking about going, just let me know so we can include you in whatever plans that are being made. All right? All minds clear? Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Walk with the Lord, and uh, think warmer weather, right? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for uh, just the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for folks visiting with us, Lord, and Lord, we're grateful to welcome our our newest member, Patricia, today. And God, we just uh, are joyful in your, uh, your, your hand of love on our church. Lord, help us to be everything that you want us to be. Guide and direct us. Strengthen us. Lift us up. Bless our time of fellowship downstairs, Lord. Bless uh, the hands that so diligently prepare this, uh, Lord, every Sunday for us. We're so thankful for them. And, and God, we... Uh, we, ne we never want to assume that someone does something, Lord, and we're thankful for everybody that has a part in making St. John's the precious, precious church that she is. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. We'll see you downstairs.